And joining me on the line now to tell us a little bit more about this is Brian Salt, founder of the uh, Salt Haven Wildlife Rehab and Education Center. Brian, first of all, thank you so much for coming on the program this afternoon. I really appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you, Jess, for having us. It's great to chat with you. And uh, tell me a little bit about this story with uh, this snapping turtle, because I feel like we often see, uh, you know, different fuzzy critters going to Salt Haven, lots of birds. Uh, but I don't know if I've seen a snapping turtle before. What happened here? <laughs> Well, we get snapping turtles every now and then. These animals are absolutely amazing, like they're true dinosaurs. You know, they um, they can live to be well over 100 years old. Wow. And, and this young lady that we got, she was probably about 30, 35 years old, judging by the size of her carapace. And um, she was hibernating in some mud at the side of a creek, and the construction crew was widening the creek, it's a drainage creek, uh, to, for even better conservation. And unfortunately, what, what happens in the wintertime is when that kind of construction is going on, sometimes these hibernating animals will get dug up. But to the credit of the construction company, they give us a call, and uh, we were able to uh, sort her out and get her back on our feet again, so to speak. That's wonderful. And yeah, you know, it's it's kind of funny that this operation that you were saying, you know, was was to improve conservation in the area. Uh, you know, it ended up unearthing this this young lady, if you will, in in, in turtle <laughs> turtle terms. Uh, and and yeah. yeah, so you kind of had to come up with a plan B for her for the winter. Yeah, well, she's she was way too big for our facility uh, to do her justice. So we uh, we made arrangements with the Ontario Trillium Conservation uh, center up near Peterborough, and they're an amazing facility for turtles. In fact, that's all they do is turtles. And uh, so she is going to spend the winter there, and she's not injured in any way, uh, and they will release her in a suitable uh, release spot, hopefully back to where she came from. That's what we would like to see, but we'll leave that up to them. They're the experts in turtles, and uh, and then she'll be on her way in the spring. That's amazing. And it just kind of shows you that, you know, nature is all around us and we really are, you know, encroaching on them. They, they, animals of all, of all species, you know, are doing their thing as best they can each and every day. And, uh, we have some really uh, remarkable creatures that are, are, are right in our own backyards in this sense. And, and this is one of them. It's, it's pretty neat. I mean, it must have been cool to see her up close and in personal. And, and the picture that was posted to Twitter is really fabulous. You get to uh, see some amazing details on her. Well, you know, there's there's all kinds of turtles in Ontario. In fact, we have about eight species of turtle in Ontario. Um, and all of them, strangely enough, are either endangered or threatened or of special concern. The snapping turtle is of special concern. And, and that means that there, there's a possibility that they could become endangered. But it wasn't so long ago, you know, that the Ministry of Natural Resources allowed snapping turtles to be hunted even though they had this species of special concern designation. And in fact, in 2011, the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources uh, denied uh, the safety of snapping turtles for whatever reason we still don't know, but continued pressure by the public had them reverse that. And now they are no longer able to be hunted. I don't know who would want to eat one of those anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't exactly look, uh, I, I don't know, particularly appetizing or, no. you know, and, and also dangerous because, I mean, they're called snapping turtles for a reason. Yeah, well, one of the reasons why they snap is not that they're mean, but they're plastidon. Underneath the shell is, it doesn't cover their whole body. These are fat, meaty, muscular animals, and so they can't withdraw into their shell. So to protect themselves, they... They'll reach out and snap, but their neck is quite long, too, so it's not a good idea to try to pick them up because they can reach that neck right over the top of the shell and get you if you're not careful. But that's another good point, you know, Jess, if you come across a snapping turtle in the spring, which people often do because they come out of the swamps and out of the, out of the water to find a nesting area, and they love that gravelly, sandy area alongside of roads. And uh, so you often see them nesting, laying eggs at the side of a road. But if you come across one, just give them a stick to bite on to, as long as they're not laying eggs, you're likely a female at that point, and drag them towards the area that they were already heading. Because if you take them back in the direction they came from, as soon as you drive away, they're going to be right back out on the road again. So that's just a little tip that there that might help. 
Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, really important information for people to have. And uh, yeah, don't don't make them uh, backpedal because, I mean, they, they have a hard enough time getting around. They're not exactly, you know, super speedy. So don't don't detour them and then make them do the extra work. They have no ninja qualities about them, I can tell you. <laughs> if only they did. <laughs> and it's not like they're logging their steps either. They don't have a Fitbit. They don't have a phone that, that says, oh, good for you, turtle. You've added some extra steps here. Uh, so they really will not appreciate uh, having to retrace their steps if they're on their way to, to get to another uh, point B, if you will. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, well, Brian, I'm so glad that we had a chance to chat about uh, this this story and, uh, you know, obviously the hard work that goes on at Salt Haven each and every day with you and the team there. Uh, you know, if, if people want to support or, or uh, you know, learn more about what it is that you do, they can go to salthaven.org, right? Yeah, salthaven.org. Uh, we're on just about all social media. Uh, we're, we're building a new website, by the way. It should be out in a couple of weeks. And uh, our social media person, uh, Kathy Mueller, is doing the, just an amazing job of keeping us out there in people's forefront of people's minds. I should also mention to you, too, Jess, that accolades should be given to this construction company, mm-hmm. a soft to call salty. And, you know, it would have been so easy just to bury the turtle. Nobody knew, you know. But, no, they, they, they showed a bit of compassion, and they phoned, and now this turtle is safe. Yeah, absolutely. That's it's that kind of uh, just taking a few extra moments to think the situation through and uh, calling in for some help to people like yourself who are experts uh, on situations like this. And uh, yeah, I absolutely agree. Like kudos to everybody who was on site there that day and that made that literal call to you guys uh, for some assistance because uh, it it means that this turtle gets to go on now and keep doing her thing. She's she's young in turtle turtle years, so she has a long life ahead of her, hopefully. Yeah, she's not even middle age yet at that age. You know? <laughs> <It's pretty amazing. laughs> That's good because that turtle and I are, are close to the same age. It sounds like so. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad neither one of us is near middle age yet. <laughs> Brian, thank you so much again for your time today and for sharing this with us. Uh, I think it was uh, exactly what we needed to talk about on a day like today, where there's a lot of negativity out there. Glad we could uh, share some positive news. This has been wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, there's, there's good news all around you. You just have to pay attention.